stout wooden stave tied taut with string to send forth arrows upon the wing. From Robin Hood to Agincourt, the longbow's history sure ain't short. friends. I have a longbow. Yes, taller than I am. Six foot stave of wood. Hickory, not you wood or ash, but a nice hickory longbow of 45 to 50 pound draw weight. I ordered this through Graven, G-R-A-Y-V-N, uh, in the United States. And because it's hickory, it was affordable. I also have a dozen arrows. Uh, there are 11 more hiding behind the poleaxe, but here we go. And uh, I just wanted to briefly talk about this. I mean, I'll probably do several short videos about this. I don't want to talk for too long. I try to record this and it just gets out of control. I really just want to introduce you to the longbow. It's really cool. Bows are extremely old uh, as a technology. We know they go back thousands and thousands of years. We know that early arrows um, with flint and stone arrowheads, feathers for fletching are really good. We're going to have, you know, we can talk more about arrows specifically. We could, you know, easily give a five, six minute talk on how arrows work in the Archer's Paradox. But for now, I just want to introduce you to this. So I've got an arrow and I've got a bow and most importantly, some safety tips and things about this. Now I've knocked the arrow. It has a plastic knock that clips on so it'll hold in place. I still have to put the little bead on here so that I have it lined up and I know exactly where it goes every time and it's just for faster shooting. But I wanted to get the bow out, I wanted to string it, I wanted to show it to you. It's a hickory longbow, 45 to 50 pound draw weight, which is nowhere near medieval proper war bow would be. Um, but yeah, it's a lot of fun. And I, before pandemic times, uh, you know, I would go to the archery center quite often, whether we had group nights uh, for my sword friends and I, we'd do some archery, or a couple times just went on my own just to loose some arrows down at the target. And uh, more importantly, we say loose or shoot. We don't say fire because there's no fire involved. Fire comes from when you have gunpowder and you're applying a match or wick or cord that's burning to ignite the powder, whether it's on a cannon placement or like an arquebus and you're moving the burning cord towards it. Fire means apply fire to ignite to launch projectile. This is shooting. So I'm not going to play around with this too much because I'm not outdoors and I can't just go out into the garden. You can't go into your yard and loose arrows at targets all day long. That's not really appreciated by the city here. So I'll have to wait to go to the archery center or maybe visit a friend at an acreage or something like that. Hmm. Yeah, well, it'll have to wait for some actual footage of shooting arrows. But a couple things. One, you never shoot without an arrow on the string. If you draw the string back and release without the arrow on there, that's bad for the bow. Why is that? Well, let's explain the physics of how archery actually works. That's really what I want to do, an overview of bows and why they work. So when you have the bow strung on this curved stave of wood, you have a certain amount of energy already built into it. What you want to do is you want to add to that energy by drawing. So if this is a 45 to 50 pound draw weight, so I draw about 45 and I'm okay. Uh, I'm more used to 35 to 40 from when I practice and I haven't used the bow in over two years. So yeah, I'm a little out of practice, but take your fingers, put them on either side of the string, do not pinch the arrow and you draw back. And when you draw back, you are imparting energy to the projectile. Okay. As I get that poundage, that's energy, potential energy that's stored up now in the string. When I release, that energy is going to be transferred into the arrow, which is going to propel the arrow forward. Fletching and of the feathers is going to spin, it's going to move off towards the target. Whole other thing about how that actually works. The problem is if I don't have an arrow and I draw back and I release, what happens? The energy has to go somewhere. I gave it all that energy. And when the string gets here, it's going to vibrate. That energy is going to travel back up the string into the limbs of the bow. It's going to wear out a lot faster. It could snap the string. It could break the limb. That means I could be injured. 
I don't want to be injured. Let's face it, I want to enjoy this as a hobby. I do not want to make it a danger to myself, despite the name. So, I did here, I draw the arrow, I only point at the actual target, I do not, even with a little bit of a draw, I do not want to point this at a person, we still want to be respectful, even with just a steel target tip, it's not really sharp, it's modern, but it can still hurt someone. So I'm only going to put an arrow on the string when I am ready to shoot at a target, and I'm only gonna draw back when I'm ready to shoot, and I'm only gonna draw back if there's already an arrow on the string. I'm not gonna mess around with it. You can draw back without, but then you have to slowly back it down because you built up all that energy. You have to dissipate it, and you use your body to do it. When you shoot, you are also pointing a foot towards the target. Fine, that's how I was taught. Uh, by someone else and uh, I'm pulling the string back and I want to get uh, my thumb to at least the corner of my mouth. Now if you're just starting out and you're using something like a 25 pound uh, training recurve, yeah it's gonna be pretty easy. Uh, some people, you know, they're not used to it. You, you get a little tired and uh, when you are doing any kind of archery you're using muscles that you may not be used to using got an archery bracer on and a whole other subject for video but when I'm using the bow and I am drawing the arrow back and because I'm indoors I don't want to necessarily keep drawing back all the way it is tiring me out and I'm not used to it because I haven't done this in two years but I'm putting a lot of pressure on my left forearm my right shoulder and my right hip okay when I'm drawing back I'm using my whole body I'm really opening up I have my finger there so I don't accidentally release, okay? <laughs> um, when I do that, I'm opening up my body. I have a lot of pressure on that left forearm as I push forward. I have this shoulder moving back and it's traveling down the muscles and my whole body is involved. Now what that means is historically, archers had different skeletal structures from other people. And that's how you can tell someone was an archer. The left forearm is going to have thicker bones with different muscle attachment points. And the right shoulder blade is going to also be differently shaped and have those muscle attachment points. Because you're building those muscles, the bone has to thicken in order to properly anchor the muscles that are doing the work. So you can always tell an archer using archaeology, looking at the skeleton, those changes in the left forearm and the right shoulder blade in particular are telltale signs. So it is really a full body activity when you use a bow. And now this, 45 to 50, and I draw about, I can draw 45. And so yeah, I'm almost there. I'm going to need a little bit of practice so that I'm a little steadier and smoother with releasing the arrows. It's going to take time. I'm not going to look great, you know, for the first three or four times that I go and practice, but it's going to be fun and I'm going to enjoy it. Now, do you ever imagine that bows particularly long bows, go up to 150, 160, probably over 200 pounds. I think Joe Gibbs, the war bow archer, can draw a 210 pound bow. That's a lot. That's more than I ever plan to do. I'm happy if I get to a proper 50 with this. Um, but even at an average of 150, 160 pounds, and you know, the, if you ever look at the documentary for The Wreck of the Mary Rose, they talk a lot about long bows and that. Um, should be on YouTube on several channels. Uh, fascinating because you have actual longbows from the 16th century that have survived and have been tested and we can really figure out that yeah there's a lot of weight that goes into that. Now we talked about you drawing the string and you're imparting energy into the string which then goes into the arrow. So the draw weight plus the amount of arrow that you draw back that distance so that gives us a power stroke and so the length of that arrow on the string with that power stroke is going to be the amount of time to transfer the energy from the string to the arrow towards the target. If we had a crossbow, for example, which I don't have, I have a little toy one that just is like an elastic band that shoots a cork. We're not gonna bother with that. Um, it's gonna have a shorter stroke and a heavier quarrel or bolt. So it's gonna be a higher draw weight. So a 150 pound longbow made out of you Y-E-W, 
which is a combination of the heart and the sapwood of the tree. Sapwood's the outside, heart's the inside, obviously. That allows it to really develop that and hold together when you impart that kind of strength into it. Um, a crossbow that did 900 pounds of draw weight where you needed a mechanical device to help span it and lock it in place, um, it's not six times more powerful. It's less time to impart energy to the projectile and a heavier projectile in order to propel it through the air at speed. So it really comes down to calculating the amount of energy that's delivered by the projectile. And uh, if you've seen Todd of Todd's Workshop and Todd Cutler, if it's his channel, hopefully I remember a link to it. Now, he's done some excellent work with archery, so I'm not going to do a long video about this, really, because he's got some great stuff. And he does the math. He knows how to do the math, and he can tell you about the amount of energy that's delivered. So, 150 pounds on a longbow still delivers a lot of energy compared to 8 to 900 pounds on a crossbow. It all comes down to the physics. How much energy do I impart? How much time do I have to get that energy into the projectile? How heavy is the projectile? How far is it going to go? What's the spin? All of these things factor into it. It's really fascinating nerdy science and uh, I don't always understand all the math formulas but I understand the concepts and I like archery. And now I have a bow so I can actually take part in all of that. Hopefully I'll make other videos talking about arrows and maybe myths so remember like subscribe and of course comment so if there's something particular about archery you would like me to discuss in a future video let me know and we can look at like the archer's paradox and how fletchings are um, applied to arrows and types of arrowheads or we can talk about myths like Agincourt and uh, the still got my fingers myth and all sorts of stuff that we can go about talking about you let me know in those comments but for now do remember take care stay safe and stay on point